uh, just like you could have done that for your own Kanban if you had preferred uh, to do so. I go back to the WeAgree workspace, your WeAgree DMS, where I'm going to pick up a contract and transfer it into the CLM. It's time to show you WeAgree CLM, Contract Lifecycle Management, for the stage post-signing. I'll select a contract and I'll sign one that is not yet fully e-signed, but there's no big problem in that because WeAgree doesn't care about the place where your contract is pre-signing or post-signing for receiving the e-signing notices back from uh, DocuSign. And also uh, the task relating to follow up on the e-signing and um, awaiting the e-signatories to sign, as well as the widget on the dashboard showing which contracts are still pending e-signing, remain there. So I'll manage the agreement, select the contract entries that need to be moved to the CLM and click manage. First thing you need to do is to clean up your DMS, the history of versions and files that you collected during the negotiations. And of course, if there will be a dispute in the future, you might need the versions that you've exchanged or received from the other party, but you don't necessarily want to keep all the documents uh, in your files because it clutters your overviews and it's uh, not necessary for example to keep compares between documents because if at later stage you want to create a compare you can still do that so what we agree does is it proposes to you a setup that aligns with what it expects and what how your contract will survive post signing in the CLM. It will propose the last draft version or a final or pre-final version to be directly accessible. If the e-signed uh, PDF is there, then of course also that one will be directly accessible from overviews. And it will do the same with, for example, documents with schedules or documents related to the transaction. The draft versions are proposed to be archived so they will still remain uh, available except that they are not in directly accessible you need to open your archive you've seen that and there are those files that you might want to delete i can make my own assessment over here and for example i don't necessarily find the version one relevant because i understand uh, precisely how our own systems were set up and i don't necessarily want to keep version three as that was not a big one in terms of negotiated terms and then i've cleaned up the overview a little bit i can put a note to myself and complete the details for example a different priority status after the signing and then i click manage and we agree will automatically bring it into the clm it will notice that the e-signed file or that the signed file is not yet there so it prompts me to upload it if it's not a relevant thing for our purposes then as the e-signing is pending i would not remind myself and close it and then we are in the clm with the overview of details of this particular signed contract let's Let's walk you through it. First of all, on the right hand side, you see those key details of uh, the agreement, the party details, signing dates not yet known, the title of the agreement, some background uh, information as it will show up in the overview, and then some more uh, relevant details related to the contract status and the contract number. One remark over here, it is possible to enter your own contract number but it is also possible that we agree generates contract numbers fully automatically that's for a separate video it's quite a powerful feature because you can indicate at what stage contracts will be assigned a number and you can also pre-format uh, the contract numbering style in what elements needs to be included in the contract number um, quite a powerful feature you can indicate the urgency of the agreement and the contract owner you can reassign it you can indicate who or which department of the company of the organization is the user group that will work with this contract also you can indicate which contract sheet so the set of metadata on which you want this contract to be managed and of course there's your note to self then there is a data retention period applicable uh, in the case of expired contracts for automatically deleting your 
contract data. And if that's not the default period that you want to apply to these contracts, you can override it by de defining it uh, yourself. On the left hand side, you see the parties to the agreement uh, as they were already listed over here. And if you walk through it, you will be able to check those details. You can see in the repository as we had created it but of course you can also show the archived files as i want them to be kept i already indicated to you that a contract entry may have its own website i had defined it over here if we were a further walk through it i can reassign the contract to my colleagues i can indicate that a different user group or department needs to work with it and i can add additional colleagues uh, to this overview so that they will have this contract on their overview for their actions uh, in connection with it then uh, the e-signing status um, can be followed over here uh, and then there are those key data that are specific to this type of agreement. Uh, you can imagine that an NDA might need to be monitored, but an NDA doesn't necessarily have pricing aspects and it doesn't necessarily have those aspects that are relevant for, in our case, services agreements. If you are sales side oriented contract like a distribution agreement, an agency agreement or a sales agreement, then you will have very different parameters on which you want to monitor your contracts than if you are on the procurement side. And this is what you can fully tailor to your own needs and it's quite powerful and what you do and here is where the added value of a full integration between contract creation and CLM is visible you would build your contract sheets for contract lifecycle management by using the Q&A questions that were triggered in creating a first draft of that agreement because typically that will fit the variables that you have in your business it leads to a large part and uh, that you want to monitor or manage your contracts on in addition to those business uh, aspects and legal aspects such as assignability change of control applicable law and dispute resolution mechanism that you may want to record in connection with uh, a signed contract there are of course timing related parameters metadata that relate to the effective date expiry date and the question whether you want to continue the relationship or not now that is where notifications are to be sent out by we agree and this is quite a uh, advanced way of how we have set it up we agree supports both the careful and the careless people in relation to the we agree CLM careless in that we agree allows the administrator to predefine certain parameters and therefore the notifications that are being sent in connection with certain dates so the careless user who just registers the contract in the CLM and doesn't fine-tune on the parameters will get those notifications as they were predefined by the administrator and it also supports the careful contract manager who doesn't necessarily need to be reminded of all aspects uh, of a certain contract because they may find that certain notifications are either irrelevant uh, require further consideration other notifications may be uh, necessary let's take the example over here in connection with the effective date it may not be uh, not only be important to take a mi first milestone action, but it may also be uh, necessary to take uh, first actions in connection to the uh, contract at a low urgency. As it is so fresh, uh, it's within a few weeks uh, time from now, there may not be a need to create a task, but I would want to have this sort of scheduled five days as of the effective date in connection with the latest date for termination 150 days before uh, by default is scheduled for receiving a notification but i may want to be a little bit earlier than that in reconsidering alternatives so i would send myself an action uh, just like that and i think that the default notification that i would receive is not relevant for my purposes same may apply for the 95 uh, days in advance uh, because then it may be too late or i might want to leave it in 
in case we are going to terminate it and I allow myself just a little bit more time uh, being 95 days um, presuming that the termination notice period is three months. And that is all. There's an overview with all the tasks in connection with this contract. Um, if there are more than just one or two pending that this may be a useful contract related Kanban and you have the possibility to check the history of modifications. There's some logging on all the changes that have been made in the past and who has made which changes to the CLM. All users actions are recorded and logged into the We Agree Wizard. So there's a full audit trail of all the actions uh, in connection with the contract at all stages. But not everything will be visible over here because not all of it is relevant for immediate insight, but it is available on the background. Final thing is that next to each item in the CLM contract fields are these little green eyes. That is if you had the automated AI supported review of contracts activated, because in such case you would click on the little I and it will jump straight to the contract clause where that parameter is actually addressed. Now, we have not done that. It's the subject of a separate video. Same relates to automated and AI based risk assessment of contracts. We leave it by there and we go back to the overview page of the we agree clm where you can manage your obligations and where you have access to the signed contracts that are in this case here on this page under my responsibility as an owner or in which i am involved uh, as one of the stakeholders uh, in the contract you can see that there are a few with high urgency and of course this is the contract entry that we have just moved into the uh, clm so that's uh, on top listed it gives me good insight on what contracts are requiring my attention um, i have made my notes uh, so as to who is to act first i made some notes to self on what action needs to be taken and if i don't remember exactly what this contract was about there's the info icon that tells me more about the background of this uh, agreement then in this column you can see those documents that are immediately available strange enough it's an excel sheet uh, let's see why that is the case there's also an red icon in this case instead of a blue one and that is because the final version signed by all the parties has not yet been uploaded in connection with this contract and if i click on it i have immediate access to the full repository of this signed contract entry with those uh, in the archive if i wish i also see why um, the Excel sheet is on top. That's because we agree treats the final version as their first ones to be listed, then annexes and schedules to be the second or the secondary ones and the draft contracts uh, to be thirdly uh, visible. And in this case, we have kicked off version five for signing. So I would change the uh, status into the pre-final version. And once the e-signed version returns, of course, it will be added on top of this. That will certainly be a PDF. Okay, so this is now my repository. If you refresh the page, you can see that it's actually the Word document that is currently available. And I have, just like on the pre-contractual page, the possibility to um, filter it with some shortcut buttons, so to say. For example, I can see with one click of the button which contracts are expiring in the next two months. Let's walk furthermore through the overview of uh, the contracts and tell you a little bit more about what you can do over here. If I would like to assign a task in connection with a certain contract, for example here, Annemarie van Fluiten, in connection with check for a kickoff meeting, I select it over here and I can assign her a task and she will receive the task on her Kanban. I can change the stakeholders of this uh, contract in the case of a handover, so post signing it may makes it makes a lot of sense 
that you organize a handover to the people of the operations who need to work uh, with it. And I could, in connection with a selected set of contracts, change, for example, the status of those contracts where I might find that they are not for medium pri high priority or medium priority only. And I could indicate, for example, for a select set of contract entries in the uh, CLM that they are to be terminated or that they are actually terminated. Likewise, I have on the overview page possibilities to change a number of things. And for example, if I know more information about pending contract, I could also change the date and it opens up the pop-up. What we've just seen in connection with this contract entry a few minutes ago, and I could change the date or I could even change the notifications in connection with this contract entry. Now, this is what is readily available if you are on your My Signed Contracts overview page. There's, like elsewhere in the WeAgree We Wizard, a page of My Colleagues. And in this case, it basically means that these are the managed contracts or the CLM contracts in my user groups. I have created some filters to see what is Mati van der Poel working on, Marianne Fox, and with one click of a button, I can see how they are doing and I can step in if some urgent action was required. For example, in connection with this distributorship, if a colleague in the business approaches Marianne and she's not in the office uh, today. I can also see whether there are any contracts expiring in the next two months. Actually, my colleagues are doing way better than I do because I do have uh, expiring contracts. Now, as a step up to the last part of this demo video, I'm going to create a widget that is going to be shown eventually on the analysis and reporting dashboard of WeAgree. Very appealing part of the demonstration, but what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to create a button like these over here and I'm going to show you how that button sort of automatically converts into a widget that you will then be able to, to show on the analysis or reporting dashboard and equally on the My Wizard dashboard. What am I going to do then? First of all, I'm going to filter the overview over here for contracts with the status high priority or medium priority. That basically means only the urgent ones and the medium ones are to be filtered out. I might as well add some further filtering for organizational units or business units, if you wish. I might also further filter this down to certain user groups like uh, procurement, legal department or sales department or the likes. But I'm going to limit myself to the general urgent and medium tasks as I have them over here. Now I fold in the overview uh, of what we have right now. These are clearly all the high and medium um, priority tasks. And I'm going to save this as a button. Uh, as you can see, next to the button is a buttonize uh, button. And it allows me to uh, define, first of all, the color of the button that I would like to show. And I make it red. Here we are, high and medium contracts, and it filters out only those contracts of high and median priority. Now, one final step before ending the demo walkthrough video is I wanted to put the widget that we have just created on this dashboard. And then we find the high and medium priority action contracts over here. And I can simply drag it onto the dashboard and you will see that these are all the high and medium priority uh, contracts. Now, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. We are very happy, happy to answer any of them. Thanks a lot.